What's up everyone, we're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shah, welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today we're talking about a hero ingredient. It's not new, but it's surfaced and it's become really popular and I think for good reason. So today we're talking about hypochlorous acid. So hypochlorous acid is actually gonna be an antiseptic, which we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about. But with this, we'll talk about what this ingredient does, how it works, how to incorporate it, and then just some products that you can also use as well. So all things related to hypochlorous acid, here we go. Here we go. So what is hypochlorous acid? So hypochlorous acid is an ingredient that's naturally produced by the skin. So you have your white blood cells or neutrophils and they create hypochlorous acid through an enzyme called myeloproxidase. It creates this hypochlorous acid and it actually kills viruses, bacteria, fungus that are on our skin. So our skin is like really good at protecting itself naturally and hypochlorous acid plays an instrumental role in doing this. So let's talk about some of the best case use scenarios for using hypochlorous acid in your skincare routine, potentially. So let's start off with like wound healing. So wound healing is where hypochlorous acid really initially made its mark. It's been studied in a lot of different types of wounds, including diabetic foot wounds, which have a lot of different inherent problems with them. But some of the problems that hypochlorous acid is trying to solve are things that we come in contact with all the time. So like neomycin is an antibiotic that we used in this area, but even when combined with bacitracin and other antibiotics, it's been shown to be highly allergenic and it increases your chances of becoming allergenic to ingredients that it's also used with. And so hypochlorous acid is not allergenic and so it can fill that void. It's also been shown to be effective against organisms that are resistant to different types of antibiotics and so it can help fill that space. And it's also been shown not to delay wound healing where something like hydrogen peroxide actually might delay the wound and just kind of undo some of the progress you're trying to make. Yeah, and another problem for something like chlorhexidine, which we use all the time in dermatology, is that chlorhexidine is not safe to use around the eyes or the ears, whereas hypochlorous acid is completely safe to use around those areas. And so it solves a lot of the problems that we have with other traditional antiseptic agents. And since it's naturally produced by the skin, it's not a very common cause of allergy for people. So really a great ingredient just for wound healing. And it's shown up in the literature because of that reason. Now we shift to more of like the traditional skincare things that I think a lot of you are here for. So for example, for acne, it does have benefit with that as well. For acne, it holds the same space. It helps kill the bacteria, has some role in inflammation as well. So it treats two of the forearms of acne. It's going to be something that people actually can apply throughout the day. And this is actually something that's very needed because a lot of problems people face with acne, if they work in an area that's hot or greasy, or if they're athletic or they're exercising in the middle of the day, you don't want to overstrip your skin by washing your face too much, or maybe you don't want to remove all of your skincare products in the middle of the day and then you're left with, well, do I reapply or do I just wait till nighttime? This is something that you can actually spray on during the day, respray on throughout the day. It's not going to remove any of the debris on your face, but it is going to kill the bacteria throughout the day to help prevent that part of the acne flare. And like a special case scenario for acne that I think it's actually gonna have a lot of benefits for is for people with acne mechanica. And within this acne mechanica group falls your mask acne people, right? So if you're developing acne underneath your mask because you're occluding bacteria into your pores, before you put your mask on, you could just spray the area with hypochlorous acid and that's gonna decrease that bacterial burden on the face. If you're wearing a helmet because you play a sport and you're forming acne on the forehead um, or you're somebody who needs to wear like a hairnet because of your job, you may be occluding bacteria into your forehead. Instead of doing that, you can spray on some hypochlorous acid and it's gonna help with that as well. So it has special use case scenarios for acne, which I think are kind of unique compared to the other ingredients that are out there. Now you shift to something like eczema or atopic dermatitis. It also has benefits there as well. With eczema, it's gonna be multifactorial as well. It's going to not only help with the inflammation a little bit, help with the itch a little bit, which is unique for this ingredient, but also it's gonna help with staph aureus, which is a part of the bacteria on our skin. And unlike staph epidermidis, this one's not supposed to be there. And unfortunately, patients with atopic dermatitis or eczema are often colonized with this pathogenic bacteria. So with eczema, the nice thing about this cleanser, it's not very irritating. So when you spray it to that irritated eczema skin, it shouldn't burn nearly as much as some other cleansers or like alcohol, for instance. And this is something you can reapply throughout the day again. Right, so it's gonna be perfect for your people with eczema and then you can apply your regular creams over it. So spray it on, apply your you know topical steroid or other topical inflammatory that your dermatologist prescribed you, and then you can go on with your day. So it's gonna really just have a really cool role in eczema as well. Another role is that you could use it as like an antiseptic 
hand cleanser, right? So it's similar to like your alcohol-based hand sanitizers. You could just spray it on your hands um, throughout the day and it's gonna have a lot of benefit in actually killing viruses and germs. In fact, it actually was getting a lot of hype at one point in the news because it actually has been shown to kill COVID, right? And this solves, not this solves, but it really does help with a huge problem for some of us because we either have to wash our hands multiple times a day or we have to sanitize multiple times a day. And that can be stripping of the skin tremendously. We've seen a tremendous uptick in hand eczema over the last two years. And this ingredient, because it's pH neutral, it's not really stripping and you don't actually have to rinse it off with water, it's not gonna have the same problem there. Another like nice small caveat too, because it's not irritating, we become hyper aware of the cuts on our hands when we apply hand sanitizer. And this is not gonna have that same problem where it's going to burn tremendously when you have a cut. And so we have some here and we'll just show you what this actually looks like. So you can just spray it on the hands and you can just, you know, kind of let it sit there. It doesn't feel sticky, it dries immediately. And it does have a slight chlorine smell for like a second. Do you smell that a little bit? Just so you see, it is really watery. It does, I, yeah, absolutely. It I goes away it. pretty quickly, but it does briefly have a chlorine smell. Why don't you show them your favorite way to apply this to your face? I go like this. It's part of the experience. <laughs> Another thing is I did a video about how you can actually pass staph and strep bacteria from your beard to other people and create <laughs> impetigo. Can kissing someone with a beard cause an infection like this? The answer is yes. If the beard is not clean, it can harbor bacteria like staph and strep. But if you spray this on your beard, it would solve that problem because it's gonna kill that bacteria. When we talk about product recommendations, let's talk about what scenarios you would not wanna use. What are the downfalls of this ingredient? Yeah. Right, so because this actually works through creating oxidative stress, um, when you're using antioxidants, it's gonna undo all this. So this does not pair with your vitamin C's or your many other plant-based antioxidants. You know, like you can't use them throughout the day, but you need to use the antioxidants in the morning and then space it out tremendously. It's literally going to inactivate your vitamin C product. So you're literally gonna be combating each other if you use these two ingredients together. But otherwise, it's pretty safe and in your skincare routine. So as far as products, we actually each had our own. So. I Skin Smart Antimicrobial, they sent this to me quite a long time ago, and sadly, I sat on it for a long time before talking about it. But it's fairly affordable, comes in different sizes. Um, it will last you quite a while. So it's not a huge investment up front. Right, it does last you a long time. The one that I have is the one from Active Skin Repair. They, this one is really more targeted as like a skincare product. They're really trying to market it as that. Um, you could use it on your pets, you could use it on your face, you could pretty much use it anywhere. Uh, similarly affordable, we'll put some links below for both of these products for you to check them out. Um, but the idea is that you want it something that's gonna be neutral to your skin pH so you don't have that stinging, burning sensation, but at the same time, it's still as active as you need it to be for it to work. So. This is kind of like a new hero ingredient you don't hear a lot about, but it's gonna have multiple uses. You could keep it in your medicine cabinet or you could keep it in your skincare cabinet, but either way it's gonna have benefits and something that I think a lot of people should carry with them. So hopefully this provides you with some information about hypochlorous acid and helps you kind of get a little guide as to whether or not it would be a good fit for you. So I think we both agree that it's a worthwhile ingredient, something to consider and is getting the hype that it deserves. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Appreciate you as always.